host, Amazing Artist, and welcome to a brand new project. This project is pretty special because we are going to be making something three-dimensional. We're going to be creating a sculpture that is a three-dimensional work of art. And we are going to make a teacup. So we're going to do a little cup with a handle. And I definitely recommend you need to draw out a sketch of what you want to do first. So I've drawn out two sketches here. This was my first one and I didn't really like the handle. So play around with some ideas. My inspiration was a strawberry, but you can take your inspiration from anything that you want to. And with your ideas, I wouldn't make this too complicated because then it gets kind of confusing. So I really like this sketch here because it's simple and I'm only using one, two, three colors. Okay, so as you're sketching out your teacup, you also want to be thinking and planning your colors because that is the first step of our project here. We have to color our model magic or your Play-Doh, whatever you're using. I just have a reddish pink, a blue green for my leaves and a pale yellow for the strawberry seeds. Um, and that kind of tells me like, okay, so my main cup here is going to be a reddish pink. So I need to color most of my model magic using that reddish pink color. Um, the second most color that I'll be using is blue green. So I'll need to keep that in mind. And I'm only going to need a little bit of the pale yellow because the seeds are going to be pretty small. So I won't need a lot of pale yellow. So really it'll be like, I'll color half of this reddish pink, um, the other half blue green and just save a little bit for my details. Okay, so I would stick to just three colors on your teacup. Don't go crazy with your colors because then it'll get a little bit confusing and you might not have enough of a certain color. But I just want you guys to make sure that you definitely do a sketch of what you wanna do beforehand and plan out your colors. Only use about three colors to keep things simple and not get too confusing. Okay, so I'm gonna keep my sketch off to the side here so that I can keep on looking back at it as I'm making my teacup. And I'm gonna be using Model Magic. This is just one ounce pack of Model Magic. And if you don't have Model Magic, you can actually just use Play-Doh. You can use any other kind of air dry clay. I actually found this Play-Doh at the Dollar Tree. So this entire bag was just a dollar. And they have different colors, blue, yellow. I think they have white too. So you'll be able to color yours using our marker technique that I'll show you in just a minute. This pack also includes two cutters. So it's a pretty good value. You get a lot of Play-Doh. Um, and it's just a dollar. Another option that you could do is, I think it was back in January, we actually made our own um, Play-Doh using just two ingredients, cornstarch and conditioner. So if you wanna make your own Play-Doh for this, you can go back and watch that video, make your Play-Doh, and then come back to this one and learn how to create your teacup. Okay, the other things that you're going to need are some markers. If you don't have markers, then after your project dries, you can actually go back in with some watercolors or any other kind of paint that you have and paint your colors on that way. But to color my Model Magic, we are going to use markers. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by that in just a minute. I also just have a paper plate here and I wanna go ahead and write my name. Um, especially for my face-to-face -face classes. Make sure your name is on your paper plate somewhere and we are ready to get started. I'm just opening up this package and Model Magic is really cool. It comes out like this. Kind of looks like cream cheese, but it's not. Don't eat it, please. <laughs> but it's very squishy and it's not like real clay because it's not dusty. It's not um, made out of dirt or anything. It's kind of I don't know how to describe it, but it's very squishy and you can make pretty much anything you want out of Model Magic. I am just going to start warming it up because it's a little bit stiff right out of the package and by warming it up, it's gonna make it a lot easier to blend in my colors that I'm gonna add and it's gonna be a lot easier to create my teacup. Whenever you're working with something like clay or Play-Doh, um, there are just three things that you need to know how to make and you can basically make anything that you want using these three techniques. The first technique is called a sphere and that is exactly what it sounds like. It's basically a ball of clay so you can just roll it in between your hands like this or you can roll it on your table there you go you have a sphere a ball play mine's getting a little bit dirty for my plate but that is okay totally fine so the first technique is a sphere then we have something that's called a coil and a coil is a long rope like piece of clay that is cylindrical in shape kind of looks like a snake or a worm and that's basically when you make a sphere 
and then you just start rolling it out like this. And this is a pretty fat coil, but you can make them skinnier too. So as you can see, as I roll this out, it gets skinnier and skinnier, and it looks kind of like a rope or a snake or a worm, anything like that. So that is called a coil. And the last thing is a slab. And a slab looks like this. If you just take your clay and you start using this part of your hand to just flatten it out, and you can make this into a shape. You can use it as a flat part of whatever you're creating. So a slab is great if you want to cut out flat shapes and add them to your teacup. Like if you want to add a heart or a star or something, you just take your clay or your Play-Doh, whatever you're using, flatten it out and use a toothpick or a plastic knife or something and you can cut out your shapes. Okay, so now that we know the three techniques that we are going to use to create our teacup, let's go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna start with a sphere. So I'm gonna take my entire package of Model Magic and I'm just gonna roll it in between my hands like this. Whenever we were planning our teacup out, we should have picked our three colors that we want to use. So for me, I have blue green, a reddish pink, and a pale yellow. But I don't need a lot of pale yellow. I mainly need reddish pink and blue green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sphere that I just made, I'm gonna make kind of a thick coil. So I'm just gonna roll it out on my paper plate like this. And I know I'm gonna need about equal parts of blue, green, and reddish pink. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to press down right in the middle, and that is gonna give me relatively equal parts. So now I have a part for my reddish pink and a part for my bluish green. What I need to do now is just take a little bit off. I probably really only need maybe a little bit more than that. For my little strawberry seeds, I'm probably only going to need this much of clay because they're going to be very teeny tiny. So I'm just going to set that off to the side. So now I have my three parts for my three different colors. And this will be different for everybody depending on, you know, what details you have and what colors you want, how much of each color you will need. So I'm going to say this one will be my reddish pink, this one will be my blue green, and this teeny one for my pale yellow. All right, and now this is where the markers come in. I'm gonna do my reddish pink first, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flatten out this ball of clay, this sphere, and I'm gonna take my red, and I can just color it right on there. And then I'm gonna fold it over onto itself, so now it looks like this, and I'm gonna squish and keep folding it in. And what's happening here is that color from our marker is going to start blending into that white model magic. Now if your Play-Doh or your clay, whatever you're using is already colored, then you don't really have to worry about this part. But if you get white clay or Play-Doh, then you can really customize your colors how you want them. And as you can see, compared to my white ball and the one that I put color in, it is a very light pink. So if you want your color darker, which I do, I am just gonna, oops, things are going everywhere. <laughs> But if you want your color darker, then you're just going to flatten this piece out again. Take whatever color you want, and you can mix colors too if you want to. Um, I would just be careful of mixing complementary colors, okay? I wouldn't mix those complementary colors because when you mix them together, they make brown. So red and green are complements, they will make brown. A yellow and purple are complements on the color wheel and they will also make brown if you mix them and last but not least orange and blue are complements on the color wheel so if you mix them together they will make brown just to be safe so I don't accidentally make brown I'm gonna keep my warm colors together and I'm gonna keep my cool colors together because then it won't make brown but when you start mixing warms and cools, sometimes it will turn brown so I'm just gonna stick to the warm and cool color schemes and um, you know, I've already put red in this, so I'm not gonna put blue, green, or purple in there. I might put some orange in there to make it more of a peachy color, but I don't wanna mix my warms and my cools, and I don't wanna mix any complementary colors because then that will make brown. Now, if you are wanting brown, then of course you can mix those colors or you can just use a brown marker, totally up to you. All right, so I just added a little bit more color in there, and I'm squishing it together. 
and it's still not dark enough so I'm going to flatten it out again. Add some more color and this time I think I want to add some orange. So I'm going to put some red in there and I'll just put some orange right on top and we'll see what that does. that color a lot but I still want it to be just a tad redder a tad darker so this might take a while to get to the darkness that you want it and it'll still kind of mostly always look a little bit pale because we started with white so it's always going to make your colors appear lighter um, but we can just keep adding color until you get it to the darkness that you want all right, I'm pretty happy with that. It is a reddish pink with a little bit of orange in there, so I'm good with that. So I'm gonna set this color off to the side and now I am going to make my blue green color. So I'm just gonna use blue and green and do that same technique that I did right here with my reddish pink. And then after I color this one, I'm gonna do my pale yellow. So then I'll have all three of my colors ready before I start making my teapot. So I'm gonna go ahead and color these and I'll be right back to show you the next step. Just finished coloring all of my pieces got my reddish pink my blue green and my pale yellow so I'm gonna start with the actual cup of my teacup so I'm gonna take my reddish pink color and I'm gonna roll it into a sphere and then what we're gonna do is just take our finger and we're actually gonna be creating a pinch pot so I just poke my finger right in there and it's created a little hole that's gonna help us get started on our pinch pot and I'm gonna hold my pinch pot right with my left hand and with my right hand I am going to pinch using my pointer finger and my thumb I'm going to start pinching the sides and this hand that's holding the pinch pot is rotating it around okay so I am pinching and rotating at the same time and that is going to help us get a nice even thickness all the way around the rim of our pinch pot here Okay, so I don't want to make it too thin because then it's going to be very fragile. But I want it to kind of have the shape of a strawberry because that is my inspiration. So strawberries are usually wider at the top and they get um, thinner as they go down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push that out a little bit by cupping it in my hands and just molding it around. You might have to do this a couple times, but each time you will get better and you will soon end up with a shape that you're happy with but I'm still rotating still pinching but I'm not pinching very hard I'm just kind of squeezing it gently between my fingers because if I squeeze too hard then I will definitely poke a hole but I'm pretty happy with that shape and since this is a teapot I want it to be able to actually stand up and right now it's wanting to fall over and that's because I have a rounded bottom so what I need to do is I'm just gonna kind of gently squish it onto my plate here okay and that's created a flat bottom for my teacup all right and I want it to be relatively smooth around the outside but it's not going to be perfect and I'm fine with that because guess what no but strawberry looks perfect either so I am not too worried about making it look perfectly smooth or anything like that I am more worried about the shape and right now I'm pretty happy with that shape it's wider at the top and it gets thinner as it goes down but you might have a completely different shape depending on where you got your inspiration from okay so here is the actual cup part of our teacup now I'm going to start working on the handle and I decided to put a little leaf under my strawberry teacup but you don't have to put anything down there what you do need is a cup and a handle that's all but if you want to do a little something extra and put something like a little plate underneath your teacup, then you can definitely do that. It'll definitely add something a little special to your teacup. All right, so now I'm going to take my blue green because I know that is the color that I want for my handle and for my little plate down here. And since I'm doing two different parts in the same color, I need to split it in half. So what I'm going to do 
So I'm going to roll it into a sphere. And I'm going to roll it out into a coil. And then I'm going to press down right in the middle. And now I have two parts. One for my handle, one for the little leaf plate that I want to go under my teacup. I'm just going to work with one at a time. And I'm going to do my handle first. Now my idea is to have like a leaf handle. But I'm going to have to experiment with a few different ways on how to actually create that. Because my first idea is to actually take part of my handle here. And I'm going to roll it into a sphere because I need a coil. Um, all of your handles should be made out of a coil first and then you can add other details on top of it. So what I did was I just rolled that into a sphere. Now I'm going to roll it out into a coil. And I'm just going to take my teacup and kind of measure where do I want my handle to go. And this looks like it's a little bit too big. So what I'm going to do, and be careful because these colors will want to stick to one another is I don't need that much, so I'm just going to take some off and roll a new coil. And let's see. Still a little bit too big, so I'm just going to take some more off. Alright, so here is the one. I think this one is definitely going to be the perfect size. So I am going to put it right on the side kind of pressing on it a little bit. Oh yeah, that is the perfect size. And it kind of makes like a question mark shape. So I want to make sure that these are touching so that it sticks and my handle doesn't fall off later. And maybe you don't want this kind of shape. Maybe you just want it to be like a perfect semicircle. Totally up to you. But I'm pretty happy with that handle. All right, now I'm going to work on the leafy part of my handle. Editing Miss McGuirt here and I was going to show you how I created the leaves on my handle but it just didn't work out my friends so and I ended up taking them off later so I'm just gonna skip this little bit of the video and I ended up just using a simple handle instead which is just one coil no decorations on it but you of course can put decorations on it if you want to. Sorry about that guys let's get back to our regular video. I have a lot of extra of this green and I'm just going to make my bottom part of my teacup here which I just want a bigger leaf shape to be kind of the plate that my teacup sits on. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to make a slab and I'm going to use most of this since I have so much of it left. I am just going to cut out a leaf shape. smooth those edges out. Also periodically I would pick up your project so that it doesn't get stuck to this paper plate or whatever surface you're working on um, because Model Magic and clay does like to stick to things so just pick it up every now and again so then you can make sure that this is not going to stick to your paper plates. Alright so I'm just using my fingers to kind of smooth out those edges a little bit. And I actually want to draw like that line that goes down a leaf. And I kind of want it to curl up just a little bit like that. And I can set my teacup right on top of that plate. And they're going to stick to each other. So that is what I have so far. And I only have one more thing to do and that is to add my strawberry seeds using that little bit of pale yellow that I made earlier. And to add my little seeds, I'm just going to rip off the tiniest little amount from my pale yellow. That's probably a perfect amount right there. And I'm going to take my time. I'm going to stick them right to my teacup. And I can actually use a toothpick or a skewer to kind of position them how I want them and to fix the shape of them once I put it on because sometimes the shape gets ruined whenever you attach small details. So you can take a little toothpick or anything that you have that has a point to it like this, maybe even a dull pencil. So I'm going to go ahead and keep adding these little teeny tiny seeds 
all the way around my teacup and then I'll be right back to show you what mine looks like. Just finished putting on all those little strawberry seeds and this is what it looks like remember this is a sculpture so it's a piece of artwork that someone is going to see from all angles all sides from the top view from the back to the side and I don't know if you saw in that little time lapse but the more strawberry seeds that I was putting onto my little teacup the more that my handle was bothering me it just did not look exactly how I pictured it and that's fine so what I did was I just ripped it off of my teacup and I just made a normal handle and I'm much happier with that and something like that might happen to you as well so if that does happen as you're working on your teacup and one part just isn't doing what you want it to do it's just not looking exactly how you pictured it then you can just keep trying again or you can just take it out like I did. I just decided, you know what, those leaves were just a little bit too heavy for my handle and Model Magic is very squishy and it gets weighted down easily with too many details. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to take those leaves off and I'm much happier with the way that this looks. It's a lot more simple and I still have my leaf down here at the bottom which is super cute. Model Magic dries out very quickly, um, so if you want to take a little break while you're working on this, you'll want to keep it in a Ziploc bag so that it does not dry out. And anything extra that you have, you can just keep it in a Ziploc bag and save it for later. Maybe you could make something else out of it. Maybe you could think of some more details to add to your teacup, whatever the case may be. Um, but if you don't want it to dry out, then keep it in a Ziploc bag. All right, I hope you guys had a lot of fun at creating these super cute teacups, and I hope you learned a lot about sculptures and sculpting techniques like spheres, coils, and slabs. I cannot wait to see how your beautiful teacups turn out. I know they're going to be amazing because you guys are amazing. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.